everyone. My name's Liz and I'm a lecturer here at Reeseed College. Today I would like to show you our Priva Glass House. It's a 1.1 million high-tech sustainable glass house. If you'd like to come inside, I will give you a tour. Within here, uh, you can't see it because this is a film, but there's a definite smell of disinfectant. It's the vinegary disinfectant. And the reason for that is we do keep this glass house very clean. We do a lot of disinfecting. Um, the reason we do that is because we do grow food in here. We have four different compartments. At the end, we have the strawberry compartment. Next is the cucumber compartment. And then at this end, we have two more compartments, which we use for a range of different things. This one is compartment four, and the one at the back is compartment three. Now I'm hoping you've looked at compartment three and noticed something a little unusual about it. So let's go and have a look and see what's going on in there. As we move into this compartment, the temperature has really risen. And one of the things we can do in this glass house is we can change the conditions in each individual compartment. It's controlled by a PC upstairs that we'll show you in a few minutes. But what we can do is we can change lighting levels, humidity, even carbon dioxide levels to get the very best out of plants. Now in terms of lighting, you might have noticed these rather unusual looking lights up here. The unusual thing about them, they're bright pink. Kind of not what you expect. And our cleaner once saw this place lit up at night, bright pink, the whole thing, and said, are you growing unicorns in there? Actually, we're not. As you can see, we're growing some beautiful petunias at the moment. And these lights are actually perfectly tuned to grow plants. If you think about your color theory and your physics, anything green reflects green light. Therefore, why waste energy giving plants a white spectrum, which of course includes green light? So instead, we give them a combination of red and blue LEDs. We use LEDs because they're very low energy and they create exactly the light the plants need. So it looks a bit odd to us, but it does give us amazing results. These petunias were actually being grown for the Chelsea Flower Show. Unfortunately, it looks like they won't be going there now. But as you can see, it's done a wonderful result and created an absolutely beautiful crop. This is compartment two, our cucumber growing house. At the moment, we're running a trial in here to see if you can get a better yield in, in cucumbers by having two plants a year or three plants a year. At the moment, we're not entirely sure because unfortunately, coronavirus hit and we were unable to get the biological controls we need to control a pest called thrips. If you have a look at one of these leaves, you can see there's quite a few little marks on it. This, I have to admit, is not ideal. Normally, we use a, si a system called integrated pest management. Integrated pest management is a modern way of controlling pests and diseases. Rather than, oh, sea pest, bombard it with various chemicals, we take an eco ecological approach. We say, how can we make sure that this glass house is run in such a way that the system is in balance? And part of that approach is actually to use biological controls. So with the thrips, rather than spray with a chemical, instead, we would get a parasitic organism in to actually eat them. It's kind of disgusting, but it does the job. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get that. But even so, I can show you some other bi biological controls, which are these little envelopes. There's one just behind me, hanging up. Here's an example of one of the biological controls we use. This is Encarcia formosa, and it controls whitefly, very annoying pest within cucumbers. Um, we're on this little tiny card. You can't actually see much, but this little tiny card has lots of black dots on it. Those black dots are pupae of whitefly that have been parasitized by a wasp. It's a really nice control because the pupae should actually be white. So we can tell it's working because they're black. 
But this little card, you can just buy them and quite simply, you hang them on the stem of the cucumber and they do the job. What that means, since we don't use chemical sprays in here, you can simply take a cucumber off the vine and eat it straight away. It's completely safe. It also means that we do not have any problems with pollution or health and safety. I'd like to tell you a little bit about some of the employees here in the glass house. Um, Alex, who has been looking after the cucumbers for a long time, is our expert. He knows this place inside out. He's also an ex-student. He got first class honours in applied plant science and production technology and deserves a lot of applause for it. We also have Jake as well, who's currently on the final year of landscape architecture. And he is also an employee who helps run the glass house. He's been particularly involved in those beautiful petunias and I'm sure you'll agree he's done an excellent job. Our final employees I'd like to introduce you to are these. This is a bumblebee nest and we use this to actually pollinate our plants. Bumblebees are brilliant pollinators. They're actually far better than honeybees, although you don't get honey. And so we have boxes of bumblebees brought in and they work inside our glass house to make sure that our plants are pollinated and we get delicious strawberries as a result. One slight problem we have with them is sometimes they don't, don't actually work that hard and we see them sneaking out of the glass house and going after the clovers, but we can't really stop them. Yeah, you just can't get the staff these days. This is the central control area for the glass house. This entire system can be altered from up here. In the corner behind me, although you can't quite see it here, there is a weather station. And that means that we can alter the conditions in this glass house according to the conditions outside. This miracle of technology is controlled by this very sci-fi looking panel here. But ultimately, what does control it is a Windows computer. So right, at the right in the center of this is a simple Windows interface and through that, we can control everything in this glass house. Behind me is a lot of the pumping system. These large pumps control water going round the glass house. And this is another way in which this glass house is highly sustainable. We use a hydroponic system. Hydroponics is the science of growing plants without soil. Now you might be thinking, why do that? Surely plants and soil kind of have a good thing going together? Well, yes, normally. Problem is, soil is actually really dirty stuff and it contains a lot of pathogens, in particular various diseases like grey mould, damping off, that can be very difficult to control within a glass house. For that reason, we grow our plants actually just in a pure water system. The early hydroponic systems were very polluting because they would take some water, put feed in it, run it through the plants, throw it away. This very modern system doesn't do that. What happens here is we take water from the mains. We want to switch over to rainwater. It hasn't happened yet, but we'll watch this space. We put feed in it, we run it through the system. The computer then tests it to see how much feed the plants have used, adds just enough food, and then it goes around the system again. In order to keep this all clean, this system behind me filters the water and sterilizes it. This is a UV steriliser. Putting that in the system keeps our plants clean and healthy and again reduces the need for chemicals. The big payoff for this is that this glass house has minimal runoff. Compared to most farming techniques, we don't actually cause pollution in the local waterways. And to me, as a very keen ecologist, that's a serious win. <laughs>